Welcome back to my New York Jets franchise rebuild here on Madden 24. In the last episode, we lost just our second game of the season, but it was to a division rival in Buffalo 31 to 28. Today, we get to take on the Miami Dolphins, who were the only other team to have beaten us this year. And in that game, there was a ton of offense to be played. Final score was 49 to 32. Our main problem though is we got a really, really slow start from our quarterback. He started 0 of 2 for two interceptions. He would eventually turn it around that day, but ultimately we fell short. But we do have a few things to take care of before we get into today's game, starting with our focus player. We have three guys that we can focus on and I have already picked them out. The first guy we're gonna add to the list here is gonna be left in Malcolm Keenan. I really think we're gonna end up needing a defensive edge at the end of the season. And this guy has A awareness, A power move, A tackle. Don't know a lot else about him, but he also comes in with great to elite strength so he's going to be our first pick for this. The next two players are both going to be strong safeties because I feel like that's probably our weakest position on defense right now. I believe our starting safety there is Bryce Hall, but we are going to add George McLeod, who right now is the number one corner in the class with A awareness, B hit power. We don't know a ton else about him, but I do know he has great to elite speed and acceleration. The next guy I'm adding is Avery Goodwell. Now I will say the other safety is good enough to just say right now we would probably take him if we have the chance, but I believe in the mock drafts he's currently projected in the top five. We are sitting at seven and two, probably not going to be picking that high. I guess we could trade up, but Avery Goodwell will be the next guy I add. We don't know a ton about him yet. A to C awareness, C play rec, B pursuit, B tackle. He has good to great speed and good to great acceleration. I think right now the only other contract I really want to throw out here in the regular season is to Jake Elliott. He's been really solid for us. How about a two-year contract extension and he will be coming back. We do have some upgrade points to get to and we're going to start with our rookie middle linebacker Damian Bryant who gets plus one to acceleration, change of direction, man coverage, and zone coverage. Then we have rookie outside linebacker Danny Campbell who is a superstar dev trait. I just don't think it shows that yet but we've gotten a couple upgrades from weekly training but he's going to get plus one to block shed pursuit tackle and zone last but most certainly not least our rookie quarterback jared mcdonald he is still the favorite to win the afc offensive rookie of the year we're going to go and upgrade that field general once again same excuse i say every single time just trying to get him a little bit more accurate one to awareness one to play action and two to throw accuracy deep we already played miami earlier this year so i'm not going to go over their entire depth chart you just need to know the top part of their team that is going to be a 97 overall Tyreek Hill, a 96 Jalen Ramsey, a 91 Tua, an 88 Christian Wilkins, an 85 Jalen Phillips, and then an 84 Devon Achan or Achan, who is apparently injured. So we may get to see their backup running back today, which will be Keaton Mitchell. And now, finally, before we jump into this game, we have one more thing to check out, and that is going to be the injury report. And I am glad to announce that no one is on our injury report. So we will finally have a full team for the first time in what feels like the entire season. And yeah, Devon Achan has a partial MCL tear. He will miss the next four weeks, so he will definitely not be a part of this game. Miami would get the ball first, but already face a third and 12 and a possible three now. Tua will drop back to pass. He's going to load up and go deep on the first play that we're watching, and it will be knocked away by Sauce Gardner. They should punt it away. Quarterback Jared McDonald will come out under center starting at his own 42-yard line. Brees Hall is lined up in the backfield, but McDonald will look to pass, and that's going to go incomplete. Second and 10. The first time we played Miami this year, Jalen Waddle was out, so now he finally gets to play against his former team. On second and 10, McDonald going deep downfield and overthrowing Jalen Waddle on the play. All right, McDonald, let's go ahead and settle down just a bit. Third and 10. Trying to avoid a quick three and out. Out of shotgun. We'll run the play action to Brees Hall. Now he's going deep downfield again, but this time he will find his man, but Waddle can't hold on through the hit. Well, in simulation, our defense would force another punt, so now we take over at our own 20-yard line on the next drive. McDonald out of shotgun, trying to complete his first pass, and he will find his man on the outside. That'll be Brendan and Rice for just a seven-yard play. That brings up a second and three. McDonald going to go back into shotgun. Brees Hall is the running back. We're still not going to run the ball. It will be a screen out to Hall, though. He gets the blocking and the first down will be forced down at the 34-yard line. That's another seven-yard play. McDonald once again back in shotgun. Once again, won't run the ball. And never mind, he will actually take off for the run here and end up with the first down before getting body slammed for a 12-yard scramble. Now he will line up under center. Are we finally going to give it to our running back? 
from the 46 yard line. Yes, we will. And Brees Hall right up the middle for the first down to about the 40 yard line. A gain of 14 on the play. Blake Corn would check in on the next play and get a four yard carry. So now it's a second and six. McDonald from under center will give it back to Brees Hall who goes to the outside for another first down and will be met and brought down at the Dolphins 22 yard line. That is back-to-back 14-yard -back carries for our starting running back. Now out of a five-wide set going downfield, and that really should have been intercepted. Second and ten. Let's not test Jalen Ramsey too much today, McDonald. Second and ten from the 22, and we'll give it to Brees Hall. And this time he just gets a two-yard carry. Third and eight. Let's see if McDonald can keep our drive alive here. He's going to throw this towards the end zone. That is caught, and that is a touchdown for Jalen Waddle against his former team. However, Miami is now looking to respond. They have driven down inside the red zone. It's a first and 10 from the 18. Hand off to Mitchell to the outside, and he will have the first down, breaking tackles and getting into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. We are now facing a third and four on our next drive from our own 42-yard line. McDonald back in shotgun. Brees Hall is the running back, but he will look to pass here. They're bringing a blitz, and they will get home. We will punt it away. Miami has driven into Jets territory again. It is a third and three from our 33. He's going to run a play action. Two are looking to go downfield. We'll throw on the run, and that is just straight up dropped by his receiver. We kind of caught a break on that one. Now, this will be about a 50-yard attempt here on fourth and three. The snap, the hold, the kick is away, and Miami will take a three-point lead. Now, we need to avoid a three and out on our very next possession. McDonald back in shotgun again. Brees Hall is the running back, but he will look to pass. It's going to be a screen to the outside, and Hall has the blockers and ends up with the first down. We'll keep this drive alive. On the next play, we would give it to Brees Hall for just a one-yard gain. Now Blake Corm has checked into the game at running back, but McDonald out of shotgun will look to pass going downfield. That is caught by Waddle, who has the first down to about the 50-yard line. We are now under three minutes of play here in the half. In Miami territory, we will run a play action to Brees Hall, a quick throw downfield to a wide open Brock Bowers who gets all the way down to the 28 yard line, first and 10 Jets yet again. That's the first time we've seen Brock Bowers get involved today. Now out of shotgun, going over the middle to a wide open Jalen Waddle who will get all the way down to the three yard line, setting up a first and goal, but that will take us into the two minute warning. McDonald out of shotgun, Will looks to pass. He's thrown to the outside, that's caught by Brees Hall who will fight his way into the end zone. Touchdown Jets, we will take a 14 to 10 lead. Miami will take over with a minute 52 to play in all three timeouts from their own 25. A quick throw to the outside is caught and then knocks out of his man's hands. A second and 10. Tua comes back in shotgun again with a minute 49 to play here in the half. He will drop back to pass one more time. A quick throw downfield will once again fall incomplete thanks to Sauce Gardner. You know, two of you want to keep testing our number one corner. I'm perfectly fine with that. Third and ten. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle, and don't tell me that's going to get a first down. It results in fourth and inches, but they're apparently going to review that. What are we reviewing here? I guess it got knocked forward. All right, upon further review, they rule it a first down, which is not really shocking. I thought he got it, but now a quick throw, and that's going to be another first down for Miami, but Isaiah Wynn is injured along their offensive line. An incomplete pass on the next play would bring up a second and 10. Tua is back in shotgun again. All they have done so far on this drive is throw the ball, and they will continue that. He's going downfield and missing a wide open man, setting up a third and 10. A chance to give our offense the ball one more time in this half. From the 46-yard line, two out of a five wide set under pressure is getting sacked on the play by Quinn and Williams, and they will have to punt the ball away. However, their punter did an incredible job. We start at our own three-yard line. McDonald will line up under center. We'll give this one to Brees Hall, and he will find some space for about a three-yard carry. We don't burn our final timeout, so I don't know if we're just going to run the ball and go to halftime just yet. Second and seven from the six-yard line now. McDonald back in shock, and if we are going to throw, we need to go deep downfield. McDonald rolling to the outside. We'll dump it off to Brees Hall, who steps out of bounds with 32 seconds to play. So do we just go deep downfield or do we run the ball and punt it away? It looks like we are going to look to pass. McDonald under pressure will have to dump it off to Brees Hall again, and he won't have the first down. That leads to fourth and inches. We should go to halftime. All right, well, I guess that does not take us to halftime. I simulated the punt. They took over at the 45, immediately got into field goal range, and hit a 52-yarder. So at halftime, it is 14-13. 
but we would get the ball to start the second half so now it's a third and two from our own 33 a possible three now out of an eye formation what is mcdonald gonna do we give it to Brees hall right up the middle for the easy first down breaking tackles getting brought down to the 43 but now our starting center joe tipman is injured our backup center rookie roman sloan would then check into the game we would get a five yard carry from Brees hall on the next play we give it to Brees hall again and he will have the first down into miami territory we would go right back to Brees Hall on the next play. It results in a second and eight following a two yard gain. From the 42, McDonald will look to pass. He's gonna go downfield. He finds Bowers who holds on through the hit first down to the 30 yard line. Now it is a five wide set. McDonald back in shotgun again. We'll drop back and look to pass. Rolling to the outside, throws on the run. That's gonna be caught by Brees Hall who breaks one tackle and is brought down for an eight yard play. Blake Corm now checks in at running back for a second and two. We come out in shotgun and he will look to pass again. Going downfield, he finds Garrett Wilson and he is brought down to the seven yard line, setting up a first and goal. That is the first time Garrett Wilson has been involved today now. So from the seven yard line, we line up under center. McDonald will once again look to pass, going to the end zone and that is deflected away. That was intended for Garrett Wilson, but it brings up a second and goal. McDonald now lines up under center. He will take the snap and they give it to Brees Hall to go right up the middle and he gets all the way down to the three yard line setting up a third and goal now. I really, really do not want to settle for a field goal here. McDonald lines up under center and I thought that was going to be a false start but a quick throw to the end zone and it's going to be incomplete but Elijah Vera Tucker is now injured. Will we go for it on fourth and goal? Yes, we will. We come out in a pistol set. This is a massive play. They could hold us to no points on the drive. Let's see what McDonald wants to do. He will look to pass a quick throw to the end zone, and he finds Jalen Waddle for the second time today. On the following drive for the Dolphins, though, they have driven all the way down inside the Jets' red zone. It's a second and four with about a minute to go here in the third quarter. Tua will drop back to pass. He's going to be under a lot of pressure and finally throw this one away. Third down. I believe it was Quinnen Williams trying to chase him down. Now from the 19, he comes back in shotgun again. Tua will look to pass here. He's going to be under pressure again, throwing on the run to the end zone and finding a wide open running back in Keaton Mitchell touchdowns offense. They are going to go for two to try to tie this game up to a back in shotgun. See if he tries to pass. He will. It's a quick throw and a quick two point conversion. We now jump into the fourth quarter where it is a third and nine from our own 40. McDonald will look to pass. He's going to throw this one downfield. That'll be caught by Garrett Wilson into Dolphins territory. McDonald lines up under center. Brees Hall is the running back, and we will give it to Hall to the outside. The blocking sets up. There is a flag, but Hall has a huge run here, but I imagine it is coming back, and that is going to be a massive blow. Holding on the Jets. Who committed that holding call? It is going to be Will McGraw, our starting right tackle. So that makes it a first and 19 now for McDonald in the offense from our own 45-yard line. Out of pistol, we'll drop back to pass, a throw to the outside, caught by Garrett Wilson. We get back into Miami territory, but now Garrett Wilson is injured. I am just convinced at this point I cannot have a healthy receiver room. Second and nine, a quick throw and a quick miss to Brock Bowers. So now we need to convert another third down on the drive. It's a third and nine. McDonald will look to pass. He's going to go deep downfield and overthrow Jalen Waddle. That brings up a fourth and nine. And we will elect to punt this one away. I really don't blame the coaching staff there. The punt is sent deep. Can we at least pin them deep? No, it's going to be a touchback. Later on in the Miami drive, it's a third and five of the Jets 46. Can we get the stop here? To a back in shotgun with a quick throw to the outside that'll be caught, but immediately brought down. Fourth and three with about seven minutes to play. What are they going to do? I'm actually surprised by this one. They elect to punt the ball away. I really figured the computer would be aggressive and go for it, and the punt is going to go out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Not the best punt you could have possibly done. Now with 6.50 to go, rookie quarterback Jared McDonald will take the field. Brees Hall is still lined up at running back. We take the snap. We will start by giving it to Hall to go up the middle, and he gets just a couple yards, second and eight. McDonald back in shotgun again from his own 26 yard line. He will look to pass this time. Needs to get rid of it quickly and does. They brought a blitz. Brees Hall breaks that tackle and will fight to set up a third and inches at our own 34. I have a bad feeling if we don't convert this, it's not going to end up well for us. Third and inches. McDonald back in shotgun. We'll drop back a quick throw. Will be caught by Garrett Wilson, who apparently has found his way back into the game and makes the catch to the 43. 
So luckily he does not seem to be that hurt. Now a new set of downs and another handle to Brees Hall and that is going nowhere. He's actually going to get hit in the backfield. Second and 11. Under five minutes to play now. On a second and 11, he will drop back to pass. A quick throw to the outside caught by Blake Corum and he's going to get forced out to set up a third and six from the 47. Once again, even later into the game now, if we don't get this, I don't have a great feeling about this game. With a five wide set, McDonald will look to pass. And he's going to look to run to the outside. Is anyone going to stop him? No, he has the first down and a lot more. Jared McDonald all the way down to the 23-yard line. We have not seen him run a lot today, but he definitely can move. First and 10. With a five wide set, McDonald will look to pass this time. Going over the middle, that'll be caught by Waddle, who breaks the tackle and gets down to the two-yard line, setting up a first and goal. We come back out in shotgun one more time. This time it'll be a handoff to Brees Hall, who will dive into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. We will take a 28-21 lead. The Dolphins will now take over at their own 25-yard line with 3.09 to play. Two out of shotgun with a quick throw down. Field will be caught for just a five-yard gain. That would obviously set up a second and five. Now he comes back in shotgun again from his own 30 this time. He will once again look to pass. Staying in the pocket, he dumps it off to the running back on the outside, but Sauce Gardner brings him down to set up a third and two. So now they come out looking to convert on this play. I imagine it'll be another pass. Never mind, it's a run play to Mitchell, and he will have the first down before getting brought down to the 37, but their drive does stay alive. This should be the final play before the two-minute warning. Two is back in shotgun. Will he actually snap it before the two-minute warning? Yes, he will. He looks to pass. Now rolling to the outside, throws on the run. That is caught, and he's forced down for just a four-yard gain. The clock stops at 157. Now, both teams do have all three timeouts still. Tua back in shotgun. We'll drop back to pass going downfield. That's going to be intercepted by Sauce Gardner. I don't know why you kept testing him today, but we'll take over at the 50-yard line. We just need to take care of the ball and get out of here with a win. Hand off to Brees Hall for a two-yard gain. They will burn their first timeout. Now a second and eight. McDonald will go back under center. Brees Hall is still the running back, and we go right back to him. Hall will have the first down and finally get brought down about the 30-yard line. They burn their second timeout with a minute 44 to play. McDonald goes back under center. Hall is still the running back. We go back to him again to the outside. He will have another first down run, and that will pretty much end this game. But we have to actually burn one of our timeouts. Never mind. Our starting right guard, Trey Smith, goes down with a minute 39, and we have to burn our first timeout. So now from the 20-yard line, we go right back to Brees Hall, and he will get met and brought down after about a 7-yard carry. They burn their final timeout. I still think this game might be over, but I'm not 100% positive yet, but I think we should be good. Hand off to Brees Hall to the outside. With that first down, it is definitely over. So we bounce back after our loss to Buffalo by beating the only other team to have beaten us this year. We're now 8-2 on the year. We will see how the rest of the division went to see if we have another two-game lead in the division or if we're still only one game ahead, but it was a pretty solid day from the entire team. Rookie quarterback Jared McDonald had a really good day, 21-31 for 230 yards and three touchdowns. On the ground, Brees Hall ran for 139 and a touchdown of his own, and then receiving Brees Hall also caught seven passes for 43 yards and a touchdown, but Jalen Waddle against his former team, six for 93 and two scores, a really, really solid day for him. Bryce Hall and Sauce Gardner both led the team in tackles. In sacks, Quinn and Williams only came away with one, and Sauce Gardner got the one interception that ended up sealing away the game. Now let's see how Tua played today. He went 20 of 33 for 174, one touchdown, one interception. On the ground, Keaton Mitchell ran for 82 yards and a score, and receiving Rome Odunze, eight for 56, but Keaton Mitchell caught their only touchdown. Well, as we move into week 12, I can now see that week 11 was actually Buffalo's bye week, so they remain at 6-4, and four, so as of right now, we do have a two-game lead over them. But the second game we will be watching today is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, led by second-year quarterback Jaden Daniels, who was an 82 overall. At running back, they have an 80 overall in Jalen Warren. Wide receivers, an 86 Chris Godwin, an 84 Mike Evans, and an 82 in Rondell Moore. Tight end is a 76 overall because apparently their rookie tight end that's a 78 is injured. At left tackle, they have a 95. Left guard's a 74. Center is a 72. Right guard is a 72. And right tackle is a 74. On defense, they have a 78 overall left end, a 78 overall right end. Defensive tackle is an 89 overall. Outside linebacker is going to be a 78. 
Middle linebacker is an 83 in Devin White. Right outside linebacker is an 81. At corner is an 86, Jamel Dean, and an 84 in Carlton Davis, along with an 80 overall, Marcus Peters. Then at free safety, a 91, and strong safety, a 76 overall rookie. Now, before we go into this game, let's go ahead and check out our injury report and see if anyone actually got injured in weekly training. And yeah, why am I not shocked that Jalen Waddle is once again injured? Why does Madden hate him in weekly training? He's been injured multiple times this year. We're also going to be without Matthew Belton, a backup outside linebacker. But not having Waddle for this game is really going to suck yet again. Well, Tampa Bay would get the ball first, but face a third and 16. He's going to go deep downfield. That'll be knocked away by Razul Douglas, and they will go three and out and have to punt it away. Following the punt, we would take over at about our own 40-yard line. We would begin with a two-yard run from Brees Hall, so now it's a second and eight. McDonald with a quick throw will find Johnny Wilson, who will fight for the first down. That's a 10-yard play. Now from under center, we're going to send our fullback Heron in motion. Brees Hall is the running back. We will give it to Hall, who goes to the outside with some great blocking. Now onto the races. Never mind. He gets caught and forced out at the 28-yard line. I thought there was a chance he was going to break that one down the sideline. Now running a play action, going downfield, and that's going to be Brendan Rice down to the 10-yard line. First and 10 Jets. That was a 17-yard play. Now McDonald back in shotgun. We'll drop back to pass this time. Going over the middle and missing everybody. Second down. We line up in shotgun again from just outside the 10-yard line. He's going to go to the end zone, and he will find his man. Touchdown, Brock Bowers. We go up 7-0. And Tampa Bay is staring at another possible three now. This time a third and five from their own 30. Daniels out of shotgun. We'll run a play action. Now he's going to go deep downfield. He's got a man, and that's going to be Rondell Moore off to the races, and he is gone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Well, that was definitely one way to respond to our opening drive, but now we face a third and 11 from our own 24. McDonald will drop back to pass. He's going to look to go deep downfield. It's a foot race, and does he have a man? Yes, he does. Garrett Wilson down to the 12-yard line. All right, apparently both quarterbacks are going to try to show off today. A 63-yard pass. On the very next play, a quick throw to the outside will be caught by Garrett Wilson, who just gets a four-yard gain this time. Now it's a second and six. McDonald is back in shotgun. Will once again look to pass. Standing in the pocket. He's going to try to run and is going to get sacked on the play to set up a third and eight from the 10-yard line. He lines up in shotgun one more time. I imagine this throw will go to the end zone. McDonald rolling to the outside. Throws on the run and that finds his man, but he does not have the first down. Fourth and two. But instead of a three-point lead, why not? Let's go for it. From the five-yard line, McDonald back in shotgun again. We'll take the snap, hand off to Brees Hall, who goes up the middle and dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. But now the Buccaneers have driven all the way down inside our 20-yard line. It's a first and 10 from the 16. Daniels out of a five-wide set will look to pass. Never mind, he's going to take off right up the middle and get all the way down inside the five-yard line, brought down to the three. But then just a couple run plays later, it's now a third and goal from the two-yard line. Daniels back in shotgun. Will looks to pass. Roll into the outside. We cannot let him scramble, but that's what's going to happen, and he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. They will tie this up at 14. On the Jets' next drive, we are now in the second quarter, but they face a third and 12 from their own 37. It's going to be a five-wide set and a screen to the outside where Brendan Rice gets absolutely murdered. On the Buccaneers' next drive, it's a third and 14 from their own 39. Can we force a punt of our own? Daniels will drop back to the pass, and he's going to step up in the pocket now under pressure and get sacked on the play by Quinn and Williams. They will punt it away. Following the punt, though, we have not been able to do anything with it. It's now a third and 11 from our own 19. McDonald back in shotgun, looking to convert through the air. We'll step up in the pocket, now run to the outside. He will take off. He has the first down and will slide down to safety at the 33-yard line. On the next couple plays, we will just give it to Brees Hall, but it sets up a third and one from our 42. We go right back to Hall, who will give the first down, breaking tackles and getting brought down. But now there's a flag. Is this going to be coming back? Holding on the offense. You have got to be kidding me. Did he have the first down before they held? No, he did not. So it's going to be a third and eight now from our own 35-yard line. McDonald back in shotgun. Brees Hall is lined up at running back. He will look to pass here. Trying to convert. He's going to go deep downfield. He finds a man. That's Johnny Wilson off to the races, but he gets caught inside the 10-yard line. A first and goal. 
Well, now it's going to set up a five wide set following the big play. McDonald will look to pass under pressure, hit as he's throwing. That one's going to fall incomplete. They brought a blitz and he apparently did not see it coming. That sets up a second and goal. He's going to line up under center. Brees Hall is the running back and we will fake it to Hall. Looking to go to the end zone most likely and he will fire to the end zone and miss, I believe, Garrett Wilson. Now a third and goal. It will be a shotgun set for the Jets offense. Brees Hall is lined up in the backfield. He will look to pass one more time. Standing in the pocket now trying to move and throws to the outside. Caught by Hall who will break that tackle but get brought down to the 10 yard line. Setting up a fourth and goal. I imagine we will just kick a field goal. Jake Elliott comes out for a 27 yard attempt and we will take a three point lead. That would be the score heading into halftime. But now it's a third and eight as we start the second half. From our own 41, McDonald is back in shotgun. Brees Hall is the running back. We fake it to Hall. He picks up a block, and then we miss Brock Bowers on the route to the outside. Fourth down, and we'll punt it away. And Jaden Daniels has led them all the way down to the Jets' 32 for a third and five. Out of shotgun, he'll look to pass. Rolling to the outside, throws on the run to a wide open Rondell Moore all the way down to the 15-yard line. Now he comes out under center. They're going to give it to the running back, who goes right up the middle with a huge lane, and he has another first down for the Buccaneers, setting up at the four-yard line. They would give it to Rashad White on the next play, who gets brought down at the two. So now it's a second angle. They come back in shotgun again. Daniels will take the stab. It's a quick throw to the outside, caught by Godwin, who breaks away from Sauce Gardner and gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Well, not great news for us. On the next drive in simulation, it looks like we fumbled the ball and it has been recovered by Tampa Bay. But now on that drive, they face a third and 17 from the Jets' 33-yard line. Daniels is back in shotgun. He will look to pass here. He's going to be under pressure from Quinn and Williams trying to escape to the outside, and he is finally going to get met and brought down to set up a fourth and 20 by Boogie Basham and Quinn and Williams. So now they bring out Kaimi Fairbairn for a long field goal drive, about 52 yards, and the kick is no good. This remains a four-point game. But just a couple plays later, and the Jets face a possible three and out. It's a third and four here at the end of the third quarter. From the 49, McDonald will look to pass trying to keep the drive alive. He throws to the outside. That is caught, but they're going to say he was out of bounds. So on fourth and four, we'll probably punt it away. They face a third and five now here in the fourth quarter. We need this stop from their own 14-yard line. He'll take the stab. It's going to be a play action. Daniel's looking to go downfield, and he will find his man. That's going to be Kate out in his tight end all the way to the 41-yard line. Later on in the drive, it's a third and inches. Now at the Jets, 23. Can we somehow get a stop in the backfield here? Daniels lines up under center. He will drop back to pass. A quick throw to the outside will be caught once again by Kate Otten, and they get to keep the drive alive. Obviously, a touchdown on this drive makes it a two-score game. That would not be great for us. From the 24, he'll drop back to pass now out of shotgun. A quick throw to the outside will be caught, and he's forced out of bounds. But there is a flag down. Is it going to be holding on Tampa Bay this time? Yes, it is. Well, that will help us out a bit. It makes it a first and 20. Now under pressure, trying to escape, and he is brought down by Quinn and Williams. That'll help us a lot more. Second and 27. We cannot allow them to get a first down here. That would be absolutely absurd. Second and 27, a quick throw to the outside, caught by Chris Godwin, who gets to the edge. And they're actually going to make this a third and manageable, I believe. Third and 11. Obviously, they are now in field goal range here. Pretty easy field goal range. They come out with a five wide set. He'll take the snap and look to pass going deep downfield. That one will be intercepted by Sauce Gardner. And now Gardner has a blocker in front of him, but can't make it that far downfield. We'll take over at the 21 yard line. Obviously, a massive play for our defense, though. First and 10. We're back in shotgun. It's going to be a read option. McDonald to the outside will get met and brought down for no gain to start the drive. Now a second and 10, still at the 21-yard line. Brees Hall is in the backfield, and we will fake it to Hall. Rolling to the outside, and now he's going to try to take off and get sacked on the play to set up a third and 13. Please don't tell me the defense gave us this golden opportunity, and we're going to go three and out. On a third and 13, back with a five-wide set. McDonald will look to pass. He's going to lob this down the sideline. That is caught by Johnny Wilson all the way to the 44-yard line. Now on a second and three, it looks like Blake Corum has checked into the game, but McDonald will look to pass. Running into Blake Corum, trying to get to the outside. He will still outrun the defensive lineman and get the first down to the 41. On the next couple plays, we would give it to Brees Hall, and it sets up a third and six from the 36. Back in shotgun. 
McDonald will take the step, hopefully looking for a quick pass. He's going downfield, and that'll be caught by Garrett Wilson through the contact down to the 20. Just a little over three minutes to play now. Back in shotgun, Blake Corm is the running back here. Will we give it to him? No, we won't. McDonald will look to pass, rolling to the outside, throwing on the run. He finds Brendan Rice, and that'll be a gain of about eight yards, bringing up a second and two. The big thing here is I don't want to give Tampa Bay enough time to drive downfield and try to answer. So with about two and a half minutes to go on second down, we'll run the play action. And McDonald's going to roll to the outside. He's trying to take off. He'll be met and brought down, setting up a third down. And Joe Tittman is injured for the second straight game. So once again, Sloan will come in at center on a third and two from the 12. A quick throw will be caught by Brock Bowers, who will be met and brought down to the four-yard line, giving us a first and goal. That would take this game down to the two-minute warning with a first and goal from the four. He's going to line up under center. Brees Hall is the running back. Heron is in at fullback. We give it to Hall to go right up the middle, and he will fight his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. We will take a 24-21 lead. But now Jaden Daniels and the Bucks offense have a minute and 55 seconds in all three timeouts from their own 21. He will look to pass. A quick throw will be caught by Mike Evans, who will end up with a first down to about the 34-yard line. However, they're not running a no-huddle offense or burn the timeout yet. About a minute and a half to play. Daniels out of shotgun will drop back going deep downfield. There is a flag that's caught by Rondell Moore through the traffic. An impressive catch, but I'm pretty sure it's coming back to holding, and it definitely is. So instead of being at about the 50-yard line, they now move back to their own 24 for a first and 20. Daniels will look to pass. Throw to the outside, throw it on the run, and he finds Mike Evans for a four-yard gain. Now they're running a no huddle offense. A minute and five seconds to play. A second and 16 out of shotgun. He'll drop back to pass again. He's going to try to run right up the middle. He'll have a solid gain here and get met and brought down to the 43. It sets up a third and one. They burn their first time out. 57 seconds to go. Daniels back in shotgun. Will drop back to pass again. Rolling to the outside. Hit as he's throwing, but finds Mike Evans to about the 50 yard line. They would burn their second time out with 50 seconds to go now. Back in shotgun again. Daniels will look to pass. Going deep over the middle, and they are definitely in field goal range. Running the no-huddle offense here. About 30 seconds to play. He's back in shotgun. He'll take the snap and look to pass. Rolling to the outside and gets rid of it downfield, but it will fall incomplete. That sets up a second and 10. Daniels back in shotgun. Will looks to pass one more time. Rolling to the outside. He breaks away from the sack. That would have been massive. And now he has the first down and runs out of bounds with 19 seconds to go. They still have one timeout remaining from the 22-yard line. He'll take the snap, and now they're just running it with their back. And I imagine they're just going to play for overtime here. They call their final timeout with five seconds to play here, and we will try to ice the kicker, but I really don't know if it matters in situations like this when the computer is controlling everything. But on a second and two, a 31-yard field goal to try to send this game into overtime. Cammy Fairbairn, snap, hold, kick is away, and the kick is good. We have three seconds left in regulation. Nothing crazy would happen on the kick return, so we are officially headed into overtime, and I believe Tampa Bay just won the toss, so they will be getting the ball first here. The kick would go back for a touchback, so they start at their own 25-yard line. He's going to come out as the only one in the backfield. Daniels steps up in the pocket, hit as he's throwing. That one's going to fall incomplete. Daniels, if you want to test Sauce Gardner again, I would not be upset with it. Second down. He's going to be under pressure and get leveled on the play by Jermaine Johnson, setting up a third and 18. Once again, he is the only one in the backfield from his own 17-yard line. He's going to be under quick pressure, and Quinnen Williams gets him down to the 7 to bring up a 4th and 28. That is four and a half sacks today from Quinnen Williams. Now it is time for Jared McDonald to see if he can win the game here. We get to start at our 44-yard line. He will come out under center. Brees Hall is the running back here. See if he tries to go deep on the first play, if we just play it safe and give it to our running back. We can win with a field goal now. Hand off to Brees Hall to the outside. Gets good blocking. Will break that tackle and get met and brought down to the Bucks. 43. McDonald back in shotgun again. Will be a read option to the outside. And McDonald will get met and brought down for about a five-yard carry at the 38-yard line. We are definitely in range for Jake Elliott here. But I imagine we're going to just try to score a touchdown on second and five. A quick throw will be caught by Brendan Rice, who breaks a couple tackles and will finally be brought down to set up a third and one. You got to imagine if we don't get this, we will just send out Jake Elliott to try to win the game. From the 34-yard line, he lines up under center, hands off to Brees Hall to the outside, but we will end up with the first down with a short gain. 
Now it's an eye formation. He takes a snap. They give it to Brees Hall again, who goes up the middle, and he will fight his way for about a seven-yard carry this time. Second and three. McDonald back in shotgun. I really don't see any reason we need to throw the ball here, but we are going to drop back to the pass, and he's going to miss Brock Bowers. Third down. Just an unnecessary, risky play that time. Now the 24, he lines up under center. Brees Hall is the running back. We take the snap. We give it to Hall right up the middle, and he will not have the first down. It sets up a fourth and one. Why in the absolute hell are we lined up to go for this? I believe a field goal would win the game. They already had a possession, so therefore it should be sudden death at this point. And that should be an offsides on Tampa Bay, but we're going to convert to Brendan Rice anyway down to the 16. I don't know about you guys, but it definitely looked to me like Tampa Bay jumped early on that play. Now from the 16-yard line, he's back in shotgun. Can we please just start running it? I guess not. We're going to look to pass. He's going to find Brock Bowers, who cuts up field and has the first down. No, they rule it second and inches at the 7. Now McDonald goes under center. Brees Hall is the running back here. We take the snap. We give it to Hall, and he will juke his way forward. Does he have the first down? They do give it to him. First and goal. Why in the hell are we not sending out Jake Elliott yet? I have no idea. From shotgun on a first and goal, he'll look to pass. And he's going to roll to the outside. And McDonald's going to take off and will dive into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. We win with a walk-off touchdown. I guess that's why we didn't want to send Jake Elliott out. We wanted to give our rookie quarterback the spotlight. With this win, we are now 9-2 on the season. Another pretty solid performance from our quarterback. He took decent care of the ball. Never threw a pick today. I don't know who fumbled, though, in simulation. Jared McDonald goes 18 for 26, 266 yards and one touchdown on the ground. Brees Hall ran for 98 yards and two scores. Jared McDonald got the walk-off game when he touched down that you just saw. It looks like Brees Hall was the one to fumble it though. And then receiving Brock Bowers, five for 55 and a score. Brendan Rice, five for 32, but Garrett Wilson had four for 89. Johnny Wilson stepped in and filled in nicely, three for 93. Over on defense, Damian Bryant, our rookie middle linebacker, leads the team in tackles. Quinnen Williams had an absolutely insane day. Four and a half sacks. John Franklin Myers got one and a half. Jermaine Johnson got one and Will McDonald got half of one. And we also got one interception from Sauce Gardner. Now let's see how their quarterback did. Second year, Jaden Daniels, 26 for 36, 356 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. They really couldn't do a whole lot on the ground. Daniels did run for 51 yards in a score though. And receiving Mike Evans, six for 65, Godwin, six for 76. But Rondell Moore, 5 for 127 and a score. Moving on to week 13, the Bills would win their week 12 matchup, so they are still only going to be two games behind us. In the next episode, though, we will get to take on the 5-7 and seven Houston Texans and get a game plan for an elite quarterback in C.J. Stroud.